drawing a hedgehog is easier than you think and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it no matter your skill level. Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. So as usual, we are going to start by creating a new canvas. For reference, these are the dimensions of the canvas that I am using. It is literally just the size of the iPad screen since this is a demo, but make sure you pick something that works for your own project requirements. If you're not exactly sure how to pick a canvas size, I have a video in which I teach you exactly that, so I will link it in the description below if you want to check it out. And once you have your canvas, if you want the reference image here at the top, you just have to go in the wrench icon menu, click on the canvas option, and then activate reference. You're then gonna get the option to import a picture. And in general, I highly recommend you try and pick your own colors because that's really good practice for when you create your own illustration. That being said, since this one is a bit more complex, if you want to download the palette, I have made it <laughs> available to you. So it is linked in the description below, along with the base image that you can use for the reference. And since we're going to start with the sketch and the sketch is not going to be in the final result, the color here really doesn't matter. I like to sketch with just a neutral gray. Now we're going to create a new layer that we're going to rename sketch. I know, super original, right? <laughs> and we're going to do the most basic sketch possible here. So nothing super precise. We're just going to roughly map out where the main shapes are going to be. And in this video, I'm always going to be suggesting two brushes. One is going to be a free brush that comes with Procreate and it's going to allow you to follow along just fine. Probably going to be, you know, getting you 85 to 90% of the way there. And the other brushes are going to be brushes from my Ultimate Illustration Bundle. They are not essential. Again, you can totally follow along with the free Procreate brushes. But if you want to get more professional results and save a ton of time, I highly recommend you check out the Illustration Bundle. So I will link it in the description below. There's always a special promo code for the YouTube people. And there may or may not be a giveaway later in this video for the Ultimate Illustration Bundle as well. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that. So in terms of brushes for the sketch, you can really use anything you're comfortable with. I recommend either in the sketching pencil, the HP pencil, or if you have the illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the sketching brush, of course. So like I was saying here, we don't want to be precise and you know, a clean sketch. We just want to roughly map out where everything is going to be. So for that, start with a horizontal line for the ground and then two circles for the body and the head of the hedgehog. And when I say circles, I know circles can be hard to draw, but you can see here, it's just very super rough kind of circle shapes. So something a little bit like this. And once you have that, we're going to start refining everything a little bit while still being fairly loose. And that's a very important part of sketching. You don't want to try and make it perfect from the start, otherwise it's going to be hell. <laughs> you want to just start kind of playing with the shapes a little bit. So you're going to draw this plus sign in the top circle and then just a vertical line to divide the middle part of the body. And that's going to help you place the facial features. So once you have the plus sign, you can draw this little curve for the nose as well as two circles for the eyes. Now you can draw any size eyes you want, the bigger, the cuter in general. I'm gonna go with slightly bigger than I had in my example. And you can also just draw a little dot for the nose and then a tiny little hue shape like this for the mouth. And here again, facial features, expression, you can draw whatever you want. I'm drawing this kind of um, flat bottom on the eyes to make it look like the hedgehog is looking kind of below himself, I guess. I don't know how to say that. Um, looking towards his belly, I guess. And he's smiling, so his eyes are kind of squinted a tiny little bit, but still super open because, I don't know, cute. <laughs> And you can also refine the shape of the head. So I'm pretending that my hedgehog is slightly three quarter of the way, so not seen either from the side or the front. So one side of the head is going to have kind of a dent in it and the bottom part is gonna be a bit thicker. And you can also draw little ears, just kind of little um, ovals, I guess, around the middle line of the face. And then for the arms, super simple. Here is kind of reaching towards the middle of his belly. So you can draw to bean shape, um, kind of at the top of the bottom circle, just something like this. And again here, no need to be precise, we just roughly are mapping out where everything is going to be. Between the two ovals for the arms, you can draw a very basic cup shape, so just a rectangle basically. And once that's done, you can sketch the scarf. 
So again, nothing super complicated here. You can just draw two vertical lines that connect the bottom circle and the top circle, so the head and the body, and then just connect these lines to kind of map out the scarf. You can then draw a little oval somewhere on the scarf to make it look like there's a knot. And then you can just draw the two flying parts of the scarf um, that are super curvy and just it looks like it's windy around the, the hedgehog and it gives the illustration a little bit more movement because otherwise it would be very kind of stiff. But here again, there's really no crazy rule on the direction and kind of movement that the scarf has to have. That's totally up to you. You can have it drop down or whatever you want. You're also going to draw little ovals for the legs and then little triangles, I guess, for the feet. Something super simple like this. And you can refine the shape of the body and making it maybe a little bit flatter around the bottom part and then maybe a little bit flatter on the front as well but again here experiment create your own hedgehog as long as you're following these guidelines you can kind of deviate and tweak everything so it's exactly how you want it once you have this very very rough sketch you can use the arrow tool setting it to uniform to place and resize the hedgehog until it's a bit more <laughs> um, in the center i guess of the canvas and then that's going to allow you to sketch the spikes. So for the spikes for now, we're basically going to draw this kind of bean shape around the hedgehog. We're not gonna go into the details. We're really just going to pretend that it's a big blob. So it's not spikes, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's just this bean shape. And here, the hedgehog, since it's three quarter of the way, we're going to see more of the spikes on the back on the left side and a little bit less on the right side because the body would be hiding the right side. If that did not make sense, don't worry about it. Just look at the example on my screen and forget about what I'm saying. It might be a bit clearer that way, but otherwise, it's just a bean shape like this and you're good to go. So once you have your rough shape, we're going to use the arrow tool here to flip it horizontally. And that gives you a clear view of what you're doing so far. So it's kind of the same as when you leave your artwork for a little bit. When you come back to it, you kind of realize what's not right with it. So just flipping it allows you to do that without having to, you know, take time away from it. And here we're going to use a really helpful tool called Liquify. It is in the adjustment panel, so the magic one icon at the bottom. And then if you set it to push and play with the size, you're going to be allowed to, well, <laughs> push your lines around. So you might be able to quickly fix some stuff that is not quite right. So for example, when I flip my hedgehog, I noticed that the face, the angle was kind of not exactly how I want it to be. The legs were a little bit too much at the front. So you can just really quickly move your sketch around here until you have something that you like a little bit more. And again, here you can see it's super rough. It doesn't need to be precise. Just want the basic idea to be um, something you're satisfied with so far. So once you're happy with Liquify, just click on the magic wand icon again to exit the menu. And then you're going to lower the opacity of the sketch layer until you can just barely see it. And then we're gonna go over it and kind of clean it up so that we know what we're going to draw because right now it's kind of a mess. So for that, create a new layer above the sketch layer. Rename it to Clean Sketch. And you can keep drawing with the same color or make it a little bit darker. Honestly, it's a personal preference. Here I'm gonna make mine darker because I noticed that it just doesn't show super well on the screen. But yeah, feel free to draw with the exact same color as before. And here there's really no rule. All you're doing is you're picking which line you're going to use for the illustration. So when we do a rough sketch, we're just building the shapes and trying to figure out what we're doing. And then we go back in and just clean it up so that we don't have to waste a lot of time with the colors. Because if we go in with the colors not necessarily knowing what we're about to draw, then it's going to take a really long time. So you're better trying to figure out what you're going to draw at this stage and just, you know, going with the colors really really knowing what you're about to do and take all the time you need here to really make sure that you pick your lines and have a clean sketch that you like and while you're working on that i'm going to tell you a little bit more about the giveaway so in this video the prize is going to be the ultimate illustration bundle what a surprise i'm going to pick one winner and i'm going to announce it in my instagram story on the date that i'm going to write on the screen right here and the way to enter is really easy. If you've watched my videos before, you know that at one point in the video, there's going to be a secret password. And if you're new on the channel, don't worry, it's just at one point in the video on the screen, and I'm gonna say it as well, there's going to be a secret word that you're gonna have to write in the comments. This is the way to enter. But be careful though, in order to enter the giveaway, you need to write the secret password both on YouTube, so in the comments on this video, as well as on Instagram, on the post that is going to look a little bit like this. 
so keep an eye out for the secret password later in the video, but for now we're gonna keep working on our outlines. So again, take all the time you need to clean up your sketch. Once you're happy, you can flip them back again. So making sure that you select both layers to flip them back. And here you could go ahead and hide the base sketch if you want and just work from this clean sketch. I personally like to keep both. So just merging them with two fingers like this, just squishing the two fingers. But it's a personal preference. I like to see the construction lines. I think it's helpful for shading, but feel free to just work with the clean sketch if you want. So if you've made it this far, congratulations, because that was by far the hardest part of the video. You're good to, to do the rest for sure by now. So once you have your sketch, you can change the blending mode of it to multiply and lower the opacity until you can just barely see the sketch. Now having it on multiply is going to help us see the lines on darker colors as well as light colors. So just a little tip right here. Once you have that done, go ahead and create a new layer that you're going to put below the sketch layer and you're going to rename this one to hedgehog or color, just something that you're going to remember. And we're going to map out the main color spots of this hedgehog, so just very, very basic color blocks. So for that, we're going to start with the pale brown part of the hedgehog, so not the spikes, it's just the body, I guess. <laughs> and here that would be the top left color and the color palette, otherwise just pick a nice tan brown. And in terms of brushes, you can use the 6B pencil and the sketching panel, or if you have the illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the outlines. Honestly, here, all you want is to have kind of the silhouette for your character, so the brush really doesn't matter that much. I like to use these brushes because they do have a little bit of texture in them, and it's going to help us blend the spikes later. There's not spikes, it's, it's quills, right? For, for hedgehogs, I think. Please let me know in the comment. <laughs> <laughs> there's always in every single tutorial there's always a word that I can't find and I think that's going to be the one quills or spikes so let me know in the comments but yeah all, all we're doing here at this stage is you're kind of outlining the body part of the hedgehog until you have a fully closed outline that you can then fill in just dropping your color from the color section here on the right and then just dropping that in your outline and you might need to adjust the threshold here so just holding your pencil on screen and then moving it from left to right right to left until you find the moment right before the color fills the entire screen and that's when you can release once that is done we're going to draw the spikes squills squills spike quills whatever <laughs> so just a darker version of your brown it would be the bottom left one in the color palette otherwise you can just manually make it darker not super hard and here you're going to draw the entire bean shape not worrying about any kind of spiky shape at all as long as your bean shape is fully closed so you need to make sure that it touches the body perfectly otherwise when you fill it in it's going to fill in the entire canvas and that's not what we want so just outlining your bead shape and then fill it in again, adjusting the threshold as needed. So once you have your bean shape like this, we're going to erase some dents in it, just a few to help us later in the process. So go ahead and select your eraser tool. And you're going to set your eraser either as the 6B pencil and the sketching panel. Like if I can't find it, I hate it when that happens. I can't just, I can't see it. Okay, there it is. <laughs> so in the sketching panel, the 6B pencil, so the same one that you would be using for drawing. Or if you have the illustration bundle, you can pick the eraser shape. So, you know, it's a shape made for the eraser tool. <laughs> and here you're just going to draw some simple Vs. Um, within the bean shape. So you want to make sure that there's some variation both in the length and the placement so you don't want it to be too regular. You kind of want it to be random and you don't need to draw a bunch of them because later in the process I'm going to show you a trick to kind of create the quills, spike, <laughs> whatever they are, um, very very easily. But for now we just want to add a little bit more variation in the bean shape so that later the process is really quick and fast. So 
So something a little bit like this, it doesn't have to be more than that. Now once you have your little dents in the quills or bean, <laughs> bean spike shape, I don't know what I'm talking about guys, uh, we're gonna add a little bit of a paler belly so you can stick with the same brush that you've been using or um, change if you want, I'm gonna stick with the same. I don't know what you would change for. And you're gonna either color pick the basic color that you use for the body and make it lighter or pick it in the palette. And here, all you're doing is just kind of roughly brushing either a organic shape like this or a circle for the belly. Now that's really, again, a personal preference. You could also blend it in later like it is in my example, but I kind of like this, this super simple circle like this. Once that is done, we're going to draw the scarf. So go ahead and create a new layer above the hedgehog, rename it to scarf. And in terms of color here, that's really totally a personal preference. I like to go with yellow because it feels super like autumn-y. But you can color pick the color that you use for your hedgehog and then going in the harmony panel here at the bottom. And the harmony panel is always going to be giving you suggestions of other colors that would work really, really well. So you can pick any of the options here. For example, Clump of Military is going to give you the color opposite on the color wheel. In this case, it would be this nice little blue. So for example, if you just select it, then you would be able to draw your scarf with a blue that you know would work really, really well with the other colors in your color palette. So feel free to use that if you want to pick your own colors. Otherwise, you can pick the yellow in the color palette or try to find one yourself. And we're just going to, like we did for the hedgehog, roughly outline, not roughly outline, we're going to outline the shape of the scarf and then fill it in. So nothing crazy here, same as we did before. And once you have your outlines, you guessed it, you're just going to fill them in, adjusting the threshold as needed. So you can leave your scarf like this, or you can add some patterns, like I did add little stripes. So for that, you would activate alpha lock by swapping your scarf layer with two fingers towards the right, or you can just tap on it and activate alpha lock manually in the menu. And now everything we draw on the scarf layer is going to stay within the base shape that we already have. So that's super helpful. We won't have to worry about coloring outside of the lines. And here you can draw any kind of pattern you want with any color you want. I'm just going with stripes are the same kind of yellow, but just a little bit darker. So again, here, feel free to experiment with the colors, with the shapes, anything you want. I just like to add a little bit more details on the scarf to make the illustration more interesting than if it, the scarf was just plain yellow. So once you're happy with the patterns on your scarf, we're going to move on to adding the eyes. So for that, go ahead and create a new layer above the hedgehog layer, but below the scarf layer and rename it to eyes. So if you've seen my previous videos, you know that I always draw a bunch of layers for the eyes just so that we can move them around later, but you could draw them on the same layer as the hedgehog if you want. Now for the color, you're going to pick a cream color as opposed to pure white, otherwise you won't be able to add highlights in, in the future, which would really be a shame. And honestly here, all you have to do is again, draw the outline of the eyes and you guessed it, fill them in, uh, adjusting the threshold as needed. And one of the beauty of drawing the eyes on a separate layer is, well, yes, you can move them around and we can show that to you in a second, but you can also tweak the shape with the eraser without having to worry about, you know, you're erasing the color behind it or something like that. You can just kind of play with the shape a bit more easily that way. Once you're happy with the basic eye shape, we're going to move on to adding the iris or pupil. I'm not exactly sure which one it would be because we're just drawing kind of one big shape, so 
I'm just going to rename it to Iris. And we're going to tap, tap on this layer and activate the clipping mask. Now the clipping mask is a little bit like the alpha lock in the sense that everything we draw on the iris layer now is going to stay within the eye shape below it. So super helpful. And in terms of the color, I'm going to pick the same brown as I use for the quills or spikes. <laughs> so you can either find it in the palette in your history or just color picking it by holding your pencil or your finger onto the color. Then all you have to do, again, sketching the outline or drawing the outline, I should say, and then fill in them in with the color drop option. And again, this is the beauty, like I was telling you, when we have stuff on separate layers, applying as a, as a clipping mask like this, you can use the arrow tool and then just move the direction of um, where the, the character is looking at, basically. So that's a super simple little trick, but I always draw my eyes like this because later in the process, if you want to just change them, super easy, super quick. You're also going to create a new layer above the iris, apply it as a clipping mask as well. This one is going to be for the shadows. So we're going to use the blending mode linear burn and we're going to lower the opacity for now around, I don't know, 34%. Doesn't really matter. We can always tweak it later. We just want to lower it a little bit for now. And in terms of shadows, I highly, highly recommend you take literally any other color than just something that is neutral gray or black. Uh, that makes their shadows look super, super muddy. So I like to have shadows that are kind of purplish grays, something a little bit like this, depending on the illustration. In this case, it's going to be a little bit more on the pink side of the gray so that I have a little bit more warmth in my illustration since this is kind of a fall themed orangey illustration. So you can see here, if we hide the sketch, you're just drawing this kind of shadow horizontal section towards the top of the eyes. It's not really realistic, but it gives a lot more dimension in the eyes. You can also add a light layer above the shadow layer, applying it as a clipping mask as well. And for this one, we're going to use the blending mode add. Now add is a very, very strong blending mode. So you can start around 50% and we're going to tweak it later. I'm going to show you what I personally like to do. And in terms of the light here, you could go with pure white or the same kind of cream color you use for the eyeballs, I guess. <laughs> and just drawing little highlights here like this in the bottom of the eyes. Now, in terms of finding the opacity for this light layer, you might want to hide the sketch. And we're just going to zoom in so you can see, oops, I made a little line here. But basically, you're going to try to find the opacity at which you can still see a little bit of the pupil or the iris, I should say, kind of shining through the light. So you don't want it to be fully white everywhere. You just want to find that moment where, where you see the pupil shining through a little bit. I'm getting too detailed here. It doesn't really matter that much. But anyway, <laughs> that's how I find the opacity for this light layer. Now we're going to also draw the outlines of the eyes with um, a new layer, so just a new layer above the lines. This one is not going to be a clipping mask, you're going to rename it to outlines. And you're going to pick a very, very dark version of your brown. So again, same kind of brown, just darker. And you're going to stick with the same brush, so the 6B pencil or the outline brush. And you're going to draw the outlines of the eyes. Now, I like to draw the outlines for the top and sides and kind of leave the bottom open. It's just a personal preference. I just, I don't know, I always do that. So feel free to do it as well or draw the entire outline. And the reason we're drawing these outlines for the eyes on a separate layer as the rest of the outlines, which is what we're going to do in the next step, is so that we can easily move the eyes around later, which is going to group all the eyes layer and then we're going to be able to move them around. And if the outlines were separated, then we would have to select and move the outlines. It would just be a mess. So that's why I do it that way. So you can then swipe all of your eyes layer towards the right, which is going to help you, well, allow you to group them. And then you can rename this group to eyes. So that way you get your file super organized, but you can still move the eyes around as needed, um, both to change the look as well as just the colors and everything. And with that, we're ready to start adding the details. So this step is quite easy, but it's really going to bring everything together quite a lot because right now it just looks like a big blob. So we're going to draw the outlines all on one layer that is going to be above everything we've drawn so far, well, below the sketch actually. So create this new layer, put it above the scar, below the sketch, renaming it to outlines. This one is not a clipping mask or anything and it's just a normal blending mode, so super simple. And we're going to draw all the outlines, like I was saying, with one color for now. And later we're going to recolor them depending on where they are on the character. For example, the scarf is going to be a different color. 
So here, same brush, the outline brush or the 6B pencil and the same dark color that you use for the outlines of the eyes. And you're really, really just going to go around your character and outlining everything and adding any kind of detail that you might want to add, like um, maybe a little bit of shape in the ears and definitely, definitely the facial features like the mo mouse, <laughs> the nose and the mouth. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this far in the video, please go ahead and leave a comment with the words forest friend. If you're new on the channel and might be wondering like, what's the deal with the secret password? Well, we've been doing this for months now and people really, really like it for multiple reasons. One of them is that it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helped me create better tutorials for you guys. So that's, you know, great <laughs> and the other reason which i think is super super cool is well you guys know me but i don't know you and whenever you leave a comment i get to see sometimes your name sometimes your face and it's just so great to see who's part of the creative community that we're building here on the channel so yeah it's just it's just super cool and especially in this video i almost forgot but we got a giveaway so the secret password is the way to enter the giveaway so that's another reason why the secret password is pretty important <laughs> so just a little reminder if you want to enter the giveaway for the ultimate illustration bundle make sure to comment forest friend both on youtube and on instagram so i will link the instagram um, account and post in the description below but yeah just make sure you comment both there and here in the comments on this youtube video but anyway enough rumbling about the secret password just go ahead and draw your outlines for your characters so everything from the hedgehog to the scarf any other kind of detail like the little scarf uh, oh gosh that's another word that i don't know the little threads i guess <laughs> at the end of the scarf so super simple not crazy complicated and here you really want to make sure that you take all the time you need in order to get your outlines to be exactly how you want them because that makes a big difference in the final product so feel free to pause the video to take all the time you need here to do this this is super super important and you're going to notice here if you hide the sketch um, i'm not drawing the outlines on the top of the head or the side like i guess the, the butt area am i allowed to say butt on youtube i'm sure i am that's not that bad of a word <laughs> <laughs> so yeah because we're going to be drawing little lines for the quills a little bit like this and these lines you want to make sure that they are not super evenly spaced out you want them to be a little bit kind of random both in the way they're spaced out at the angle and the length as well and it doesn't need to be super precise here either we're going to later go in and blend them in um, to create a better shape but you just want to add a little bit more texture on your quills at this stage by just drawing some very simple outlines like this so I'm going to stop talking, let you focus on your outlines, on your quills, and then we're going to meet up in the next stage. I don't exactly know what we're going to do. I think we're shading in the next stage. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying anymore. So yeah, I'm going to stop talking, speed up the video, and let you focus. Now, at this stage, your headshot might look a little bit like the doll from Rugrats. I think Cynthia has her name and if that's the case that's totally fine we're gonna fix that later. But for now we're just going to recolor the outlines around the scarf. So you're going to activate alpha lock on the outlines either by swapping the layer towards the right with two finger or manually. We've done that before. And you're going to color pick the darkest part of your scarf and make that color even darker and then you're going to be able to just brush over the lines really quickly to change the outlines color. Now the reason I like to draw the outlines all with the one color at first it just really is much quicker in general when you're working on illustration that's just a better workflow i find and then once you're happy with all your colors and the placement of everything you can just recolor the outlines all together because you know this tutorial i'm kind of telling you the colors beforehand because i made the illustration before i've played with the colors but when you're building an illustration you don't always know and it's just such a hassle having to just change the, the outline colors all the time you're much better just drawing all your outlines at once one color and once you're happy with the colors and you know that's what you're working with you can just recolor your outlines super quickly so once that is done we are going to start creating better quills situation on our hedgehog so selecting the hedgehog layer and then using this smudge tool setting the brush to the stucco brush from the painting panel so that's just a free brush that comes with procreate you're going to be able to just move your pencil towards kind of the well focusing on the edge of the quills 
the bean shape <laughs> that I called beforehand and just dragging it towards the outside and then back towards the inside kind of in the back and forth motion and that's going to help you feather your quills a little bit so I'm not going with super precise spikes I like to have this kind of blended smooth quill situation I just think it looks better than having to draw all little quills one by one in terms of illustration that becomes a little bit busy and not super great so this is a very very quick technique right now it's going to look like you're you kind of brushed um, the hair of your hedgehog well it looks like the hedgehog doesn't have quill it just have a almost like an electrocuted haircut but that's fine we're gonna clean that up later but for now just focus on kind of creating this texture on the outside of the quills so it shouldn't take too long but feel free to pause the video again here until you're satisfied with it and once you are satisfied we're going to also blend in the transition from the body to the quill so that it doesn't look quite as crazy as that does right now so exact same technique but as opposed to just um, blending with white you're going to be blending the two browns together and I know at this stage it's still going to look absolutely crazy, but bear with me, trust the process, we're going to make it look good in the end. So both the head and the back you're going to do this on. And we're also going to be blending the outlines towards the center of the face so that the the line is not as sharp as this, but you're going to need to deactivate alpha lock so you can do that by swapping the layer towards the right with two fingers again or going in the menu and just deactivating it manually and then again with smudge tool you can just smudge the little outlines of the quills towards the middle same as we did before. Now we're going to reel in the electrocuted look a little bit by just using the eraser to give some sort of a haircut, I guess, um, to make it just look a little bit more neat. So yeah, just using the eraser, going back on the hedgehog layer and kind of erasing the craziest part of your blending. So you still want to have some variation in the spikes, of course, but not quite as fluffy on the top and the sides as it might have been if you really went in and smudged everything like I did. Awesome, so we're almost ready to start shading. I just noticed that I forgot the cop. So we're going to create a new layer that is going to be above the hedgehog, but below everything else so that the hands kind of cover the cup. And we're gonna create this new layer cup. Well, rename this new layer cup, I should say, sorry. And we're going to use, well, you can use any color of your choice. I'm gonna use the same white as we use for the eyes. So kind of cream color. And honestly here we're just drawing a very simple basic kind of rounded rectangle like this, nothing crazy. I'm not even going to draw the handle, I like to think that it's just kind of a glass, I guess, shape. So there's no, not even a handle, he's just holding it with his little paws. More simple, cuter in a way, <laughs> so nothing crazy here. But you could draw the handle if you want. And we're going to draw the outlines, so just a darker version of a collar, same brush, we can even you can't even see it on the video, I'm sorry. But we're just going to draw them on the same layer because it's not worth creating a new layer. But we are going to create a new layer for the smoke. And you could totally animate the smoke if you want. I have a tutorial for that, how to draw a teacup with animated smoke. So I will link it in the description below if you want to check it out. But for now, there would be too much. So just focus on taking white color and on your smoke layer with the same brush, you can draw these kind of smoky s shapes but this smoke layer you're going to have to actually put it above everything so above the outlines you could keep it below the sketch if you want it doesn't really matter but yeah they need to be above the outlines otherwise it's going to look like the smoke is kind of behind the scarf which makes absolutely no sense so just two little s thick s curves i guess um that you can then fill in Again, nothing crazy here. You can fill them in manually if you want a little bit more texture or using color drop if you just want a solid shape. But we are going to go back and lower the opacity so that we can actually see the scarf through the smoke. 
because the smoke is not opaque, you know? So opacity here, you can go with whatever percentage you want, whatever looks good with your own piece. I'm going with 41%. <laughs> and once that is done, we're ready to start shading. Awesome, so for the shadows, we are going to create a new layer above the outlines. You could put it below if you want, but I like to also shade the outlines. It makes them pop a little bit more. So yeah, just a simple shadows layer. And this one, we're also going to use the blending mode linear burn. And we're going to, for now, load opacity around, I guess, 49%. <laughs> Somewhere in that range, but we can always tweak it later. And we're going to pick the same color we used for the eyes. If it's not still in your history, or if you don't have the history, just roughly pick it. It doesn't have to be the exact same. In terms of brushes, you can stick with the 6B pencil from the sketching panel, or if you have the illustration bundle, you can pick either the basic texture or the shader. Both work really well for that. I like to use the basic texture because, as you can see, it is really quite precise. So for little sections like this, it works really well. But the shader is super nice as well. Now, in terms of figuring out where we're going to put the shadows, it can be super helpful to draw a basic light source. So for that, you would create a new layer. You don't have to rename it because we're going to delete it in just a few minutes anyway. And then you can roughly sketch out where the sun or the light source would be and kind of the rays where they would hit the character. So something super simple and rough like this is more than enough. But what that does is when you go back on your shadow layer, in order to figure out where the shadow is going to be, you just have to follow the ray and see, okay, for example, here, this ray coming from the light source is hitting the scarf, which means the scarf is going to cast a shadow on the character. So you just have to follow the rays and then draw shadow where, well, where there's kind of an obstacle, I guess, between the ray and the character. For example, here, like the scarf. Uh, between the arms, which I did earlier, below the arms, the arms are going to cast a shadow on the character, below the cup, because the cup is also going to cast a shadow on the belly, so all of those, you can just figure it out by thinking of your light source. So the ears as well, nose is going to cast a shadow on the cheek a little bit. So just going over and roughly mapping out all the cast shadow. Now, we're also going to be drawing some form shadows here. So because our character is not fully flat, there are going to be some sections that are going to be kind of shaded, not because there's a cast shadow, but just because the light cannot reach that part. So all the right side of the character is going to be softly shaded as well. And that's going to give our character this kind of 3D feel. So it's not going to be flat anymore. It's going to look like it's, you know, forms and not just shapes. So here you just want to really, really roughly map it out. Later, we're going to blend these form shadows in so that they have a bit more of a softer gradient anyway. So don't really worry about them, just roughly place them. And the next step we're going to kind of, well not kind of, we're going to make them look better than they do look at this stage. But yeah, just, just roughly place them. And by all means, if you want to have a different light source, go ahead, that's really good practice. But if you're newer to illustration or drawing in general, totally feel free to place your shadows at the same spot as I am doing, that's okay. And once you roughly place your shadows, by all means, please hide the light source so we have a better idea of what we're working with. And at this stage, you can play with the opacity until you get shadow intensity that you like. So I'm gonna go with you know, something like this, but again, feel free to pick something that you like yourself. Once that is done, we're going to use the smudge tool to smooth the transition in the form shadows. So these shadows should be a pretty sweet, smooth <laughs> gradient. We don't want to see too much of a, a line here because we are in a fairly soft light situation. But we're not going to touch the edge of the cast shadow because these shadows are created by an object that is really, really close. So the, like, the end and the edge of these shadows should be very crisp. You can blend them in a little bit if you find that it's too harsh, but overall you want to have smooth shadows for your form shadows and hard edges for your cast shadows. So something a little bit like this. We're also going to add a drop shadow below the hedgehog so it doesn't look like it's floating anymore. So creating a new layer below the hedgehog, rename this one to drop shadow. 
And we're also going to set the blending mode to Linear Baron in the opacity somewhat similar to what you use for the other shadows. It doesn't have to be the exact same. We're going to change that later anyway. <laughs> and here with the same brush, same color, you're just going to, I mean, kind of sketch some sort of a, a shadow on the ground. You can see here I'm not being precise and I'm just kind of roughly adding a little bit of shadow there. You can have a very sharp and clean oval if you want. I like to have more of an organic shape, a little bit like this. And with that, we're going to be ready to add highlights, which is really going to bring this piece to life. So for the highlights, we're going to draw them above the scarf, but below the outline so that the outlines can hide the light. <laughs> so just a new layer, renaming it to lights. And we're also going to be using the same blending mode as we used for the highlights and the eyes. So add, and we're going to set the opacity around 30% for now. We can always tweak it later. You're a pro by now, you know that. And in terms of color, you can use any kind of very bright color as you want. Here, since I'm again just going with the whole autumn feel, I'm going to go with a super light yellow. And in terms of brushes, you can stick with the 6B pencil and the sketching panel, or if you have the illustration bundle, going back to the outline brush. And here, all we're going to do is we're going to, I guess, outline the outline in the direction where the sun is coming from. So you might want to reactivate your little light source sketch here. And every time there's a ray hitting a, an edge, this is where you're going to place your highlight. So if you've watched my other tutorials, well, any of my other tutorials, you know this is pretty much how I always had highlight just on the edges. It is not necessarily the most realistic at all, but I find that it really helps the character pop from the background and it's a very simple way of just adding a little bit more detail and interest to a piece without having to go in with complicated light theory. I just like to add my highlights on, <laughs> on the edges, that's all, I guess that's part of my style. But if you have a different style of shading and lighting up pieces, please by all means do that now. You might also find it helpful to hide the light source at one point just to see really clearly what you're working with. And you might want to add some soft highlights towards the top of the quills. So very roughly sketching them out and then using the smudge tool to blend them once you're happy with it. And with that, we're almost ready to add the background. I just realized I forgot the cheeks. So going back on the hedgehog layer and picking, well, any brush you want, honestly, at this point, a 6B pencil, the outline, the basic texture, doesn't really matter. You're gonna pick a slightly pinkier <laughs> version of your brown uh, and then just kind of roughly sketching some basic cheeks like this. As you can see, it makes a very small difference, but you know, why not? <laughs> Okay, right before we set the background, it might be helpful to just group all of the layers that we have so far. So just swapping them towards the right with one finger, all of them from the drop shadow to the smoke, and maybe even the sketch, just grouping them. And then you're going to be able to collapse the group, clicking the little arrow right here, and even rename the group to Hedgehog. So now your file is going to be much more organized and you will be able to move the Hedgehog just very simply. And at this stage, you can totally delete the light source sketch that we have and create a new layer that you're going to put below the headshot group. Rename this one to background shape or BJ shape if you are lazy like me. And here you could draw the background for the entire background or draw some sort of an organic shape like I have here. And we're going to do that with a super pale cream color. So pretty much the exact same as we use for the eyes here. And in terms of brushes, we're going to stick with the same ones we've been using before, so the 6B pencil or the outline brush. But if you like me, at this point you might be noticing that you don't have a lot of room for the background. So we're going to select the hedgehog group and the arrow tool, making sure that it is set to uniform. And then we're going to just use the little blue handles on the sides to not only resize, but also reposition the hedgehog until we have room around it to draw the uh, background. So again here, all you have to do is draw some sort of random organic shape, nothing super precise, and then you can fill that shape in using color drop or filling it in manually if you want to have more texture. 
And I personally like to have some random stray lines around my shape, kind of like this. Um, I don't know. There's no reason behind it other than I, I like it. So feel free to add them as well if you like them or not add them if you don't like them. <laughs> When you're happy with your shape, we're going to add some trees. So swiping the layer towards the left, uh, right, <laughs> with two fingers to activate alpha lock or activating it manually from the menu. And then making your background color slightly darker. All you have to do at this point is drawing some very simple tree shape. So I like to start with just the trunk so that I have an idea of when I'm going to put my trees before going in and adding the branches. And here, since this is the background, we don't want to have too many details um, anyway, because otherwise it's going to overpower the hedgehog, which is not what we want. So I like to draw, you know, five three threes, five trees, <laughs> um, basic shape like this, and then adding some branches, not a whole lot. We just want to add a little bit more details in the background to make it look more interesting but again we really don't want it to overpower or overtake the hedgehog this is the main focus this little cute character not the background so something super simple like this is more than enough we can also go ahead and add some little mushrooms and uh, blade of grass in the front so for that you would create a new layer this one would be above the hedgehog group so that your mushroom can hide the hedgehog a little bit gonna rename this layer to mushrooms and here you can pick literally any color you want for your mushrooms I'm gonna go with kind of a white grayish base and then a red top so these color here and I mean it's so hard to see on the screen right now kind of this pale gray color but you're going to draw some sort of a blobby blobby long oval shape for the foot or the base of the mushroom. I like to draw three mushrooms, so two on one side and then one on the other one. In general, when you're drawing little elements, kind of decor elements, you want to keep it in groups of three, five, seven, so odd numbers. It just looks better in terms of composition overall. So yeah, just kind of drawing the base here to roughly get an idea of where the mushrooms are going to be. And once you're happy with the placement, you can move on to adding the color for the top. So I'm gonna go with a super bright red and just drawing mushroom tops. <laughs> so these can have a flat shape if you want, a super wobbly shape, a tall, elongated shape. Seriously, here, there is no rule for you mushrooms. Please, by all means, experiment and draw something that you like. This is really where you can have a lot of fun and create totally crazy shapes if you want. So again, same technique as we did before, we're going to create the outline and then fill the outlines in. But since we're drawing everything on one layer because I can be bothered, <laughs> um, you might have to color over the foot a little bit if it's kind of overlapping. And if any mushroom is not where you want it to be, you can use the selection tool, setting it to freehand, drawing a selection and then just moving your mushroom, resizing it using the arrow tool. And honestly, the reason here I draw everything on one layer is these kind of basic elements here, or decoration elements, I should say, are not going to be as detailed as the main character anyway. So there is no need to spend a whole lot of time creating a bunch of layers. We just roughly want to draw them in to make the illustration more interesting, but it doesn't need to be super precise. And it might be nice to have a bit of color variation between your different mushrooms. So I'm going to go with just a darker grayish, grayisher, <laughs> grayer version of my red and just recoloring over one of the mushrooms. Just add a little bit more interest again, but honestly, you don't have to worry about that. And we're going to add some outlines. You could go ahead and create a new layer if you want. I'm going to draw them all on the same layer. All the mushrooms are going to be together. So just picking a darker version of your base. So either color picking it and doing it manually or picking it in the palette. It's going to be right on the right, right on the right. It's going to be on the right of the main color and still sticking with the same brush. So the 6B pencil or the outline brush, you know the drill by now, you can just draw your outlines. But be careful here, since we're drawing everything on the same layer, at least since I'm drawing everything on the same layer, you're going to need to change the color uh, when you draw the top so you're going to need to go with your darker red because if you draw all your outlines the same color you're not going to be able to do the recoloring trick using alpha lock because it's just going to recolor everything on the layer because it's all in the same 
combined layer. Hopefully that made sense, but basically just keep in mind that if you're drawing everything on one layer, you need to change the color of your outlines as you go. You can't do it afterwards. Well, you can, but it's, it's going to be very complicated. So yeah, just drawing outlines on both the base of the mushroom and the top. Nothing crazy here, but as you can see already, it looks so much better, just so much brighter and more vibrant than without the mushrooms. And you might also want to add some blades of grass to make it even more vibrant. So just picking green and then drawing some little random lines. I like to focus the grass towards the base of the mushroom and just kind of keep it there. Maybe a few ones in front of the, the hedgehog as well, but not like a full line in front of the entire illustration. That would look kind of strange. And you can go with a darker version of your green and just go over some of the, the blades. Um, it adds a little bit more depth, make them look a little bit more intense and just add more variation and details in general. You can also add some shadows on your mushroom. So for that, I am going to create a new layer so that I can use the blending mode Leander Burn. So this layer is going to be applied as a clipping mask so that it stays within the shape of the mushroom. Like I was saying, we're going to use the blending mode Leander Burn, lower the opacity around, I don't know, 30% and picking roughly a similar color than what we use for the rest of the shadows. So a pinkish grayish color in my case. And here you're going to have a form shadow on the top part of the mushroom. And then the top part is going to be casting a shadow on the foot or bottom part of the mushroom. So a little bit like this. But again, here you really don't need to be super precise. We just want to have a little bit more details in the forefront to make the illustration more interesting, but without taking away from the hedgehog. So at this stage, you can again, just play with the opacity until you like the blending of your shadows. And you can also create a new layer to add some highlights if you want, that is optional. It might be a little bit more, it might be a little bit too detailed, I should say, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So just a new layer, renaming it to lights, apply it as a clipping mask using the blending mode add that we're going to lower the opacity of, you know, 19% seems good. <laughs> Somewhere in that range, doesn't need to be precise. And going back with a super bright yellow orangish color you're just going to outline your outline on the left side of your mushroom and maybe even add in little kind of shiny highlights like this so they're just little uh, ovals and lines and yeah just kind of shiny spots like that Now, if you're like me, sometimes you're not super happy with details um, at the end of the illustration. And if that's the case, you can also use the liquify tool at this stage. You just need to make sure that you deactivate alpha lock on your layers that have alpha lock. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to use liquify. So just go through your layers, deactivating alpha lock and making sure that you delete any layers that are hidden. And then you're going to be able to use liquify um, on your, your hedgehog group. So you don't have to select all the layers. You can just like the group and using the liquify tool to change some small details at this stage you don't want to overuse liquify to change stuff too much otherwise you're going to stretch the pixels and you're going to lose quality in your illustration which is really not what we want after working so hard but it can help you bring the shapes a little bit uh, tighter i guess just a uh, tighten up your illustration i should say and if you enjoy drawing this little hedgehog and you want to learn how to draw more cute animals like this one, I highly recommend you check out the list playlist in which I'm going to teach you exactly that, how to draw more cute animals. But before you leave, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.